Bella Vista Gardening Program. Today we'll be speaking on gardening in July, deadheading, and summer trimming. Our host is Jerry Herner, Master Gardener, and her guest today is Lou Jasper, Bella Vista Garden Club, and Benton County Master Gardener. Welcome to the Bella Vista uh, Gardening Program. And like you said, today I have um, with me Lou Jasper. Okay. She's a fellow member of the Garden Club and the Master Gardener in Benton County, along with me. And today we're going to be talking about deadheading and summer trimming. There's not much to do in July except that. Maybe some fertilizer. A little hot. A little hot. <laughs> so we're going to talk about that, plus some other things we need to do in the garden in July. Okay. And, uh, it's not a whole lot, but... Just enjoy it. Just enjoy it. Well, you could go to Crystal Bridges or the Botanical Garden, the Ozarks. They always have wonderful things in bloom, you know, all year round. So those are nice little visits you can do if it's not too hot. No, and there's always, they always advertise, and so they know right. what specials they're having. Yeah, you can go to their websites, and they have uh, a lot of activities going on. So, But we, we talked about with all the rain we've had. and uh, We haven't had to water. We have. I haven't watered one of my annual pots yet. I, I haven't had to water one time. Yeah. That's unbelievable. But you know it is washing out all of your fertilizer right. in so there. I so I do need to fertilize that because all the fertilization is gone. So, um, But we have to really monitor that water in July because yes. they're used to so much that they're going to shut down <laughs> if we don't water. So, But the main thing is in July we have to deadhead because um, if you don't deadhead your annuals, most of your annuals, uh, you're not getting reblooming. And they get leggy. And they get leggy. So, um, but there's a number of um, of annuals uh, that are like they call them self cleaning, where you don't have to deadhead them. The the blooms kind of fall off on their own, and they don't set the seed pods. So, and they're um, some of them are Angelina, Begonia, uh, the the million bells. It looks like a little petunia. It looks like some, a little I've petunia. heard some people call them petunias, yeah. but they're million bells. Yeah, mm -hmm. and lamium, lantana, lobelia, uh, the New Guinea impatients. You don't have to do those no. either. Are the actually the little impatients? They kind of self clean they, too. They self clean too. Yeah. and the oxalis, um, verbena, and the wave petunia. They self clean themselves. Yeah, and the oxalis but, will be disappearing. Oh, uh, yeah. yeah, because when it gets hot, it, they kind says, of shut it shuts down. down. Yeah, mm -hmm. they do. Um, but some of them do better um, at deadheading. Yes. And uh, so they, they don't go to seed. So I do have a little plant here that um, <clears throat> it's a petunia. And I have a little story about that. When I was first in the Master Gardener program, like 20 years ago, Robert C. was um, the uh, extension agent. And I called him one day. I said, Robert, I said, oh, my petunias got all these little black bugs on them. And he said, oh, have you been deadheading? Oh, yeah, I've been deadheading. I deadhead all the time. And he said, well, bring this piece in and we'll look at it. So I took a little, I took a little piece like this in and um, found out that when I was deadheading, what I was doing is just pulling off a little flower. Well, that's not deadheading a petunia. You have to take the seed pod that's below that flower off, this little seed pod will make seeds. And then they explode and they go all over your plants. So here I had all these seed pods or seeds all over my, my plant and I was wondering why it wasn't reblooming. So again, you have and to you go. And you thought you had bugs. I thought I had bugs because they were little black things. So you have to go back into the plant, pinch it off and take that, um, that uh, whole, stem where the seed pod's going to be. So take that off your petunias. So that was a learning curve I had on the yes, petunias. So yes, and was, you didn't have bugs. I didn't and you have know, bugs. I noticed that you could just pinch off a petunia. Right. Mm -hmm. But if you're getting into a zinnia or some of the annuals, how do you deadhead there? Well, you need to take uh, scissors or clippers and go down into the stem and clip it at an angle, you know, a slant. Because if you just clip it straight, water can go in there. And, and it rots and it because rots. it is a living yeah, it plant. It is living, mm -hmm. yeah. So you have to, you know. And they look lots nicer with the, when, right, when you, they don't have a, 
a dead, a dead flo- one on there flower. lurking. Yes. Nobody wants to look at dead flowers. No, no. So. And cluster flowers are a little different mm-hmm. when than a single flower. Oh, right. right. A cluster you need to definitely go like a geranium, go mm-hmm. clear down until you see the leaves where new leaves are appearing yeah, take and get rid of that stem. Take the whole stem yeah. off, yeah. It's very it, important. It cleans up the plant a little oh, bit. Oh, it does. Yeah. It looks lots nicer, yeah. doesn't yeah. it? You don't have all the sticks and yeah. have, so. But uh, in roses, um, the roses, you would be trimming just the clusters, like I have uh, climbing roses that I haven't trimmed yet because they just bloomed. And so I'm taking all the clusters of, of flowers. Flowers off of it. Yeah. But a, a tea rose, like a hybrid tea, if you're going to deadhead that, you want to cut down to a uh, um, five-leaf um, stem. Little, if you have a little, is that um, because it makes a new growth thin? Right, eye? then the new growth will come right out from that five-leaf right. stem, and you'll have another bloom. So on roses, you have to go to a five-leafed little um, sprout, mm-hmm. and go, just go down that far. And you could go down far and farther if you want to shorten it. You know, mm-hmm. do a little trimming. You can go down, but just make sure you just cut right above a five-leaf sprout. Right, and like on zinnias and geraniums. If you cut down to that stem, mm-hmm. there is a new leaf growth It'll generally grow at the end, and it, that's where another bloom will yeah, come. Yeah, it'll come right out there. Pear. Yeah, that's how they grow. And um, the um, the deadheading is is really important. You know, when, when you go to a botanical garden or you know a garden that's open to the public, you very seldom see any you know spent blooms on them. Because that just makes the garden look kind of messy, you know. Yes, and, and it and it discourages blooms. Well, because you know? they go to seed. Yeah, the plant is going to use all of its energy then right. to go to seed, right. and uh, so you you've got to get rid of that. Yeah, and you do seed. have to fertilize too. And we know that when we deadhead, some flowers will rebloom a little later. Are mm-hmm. are uh, like perennials? perennials. Yeah, mm-hmm. they will. Not a full bloom like you get in the spring, but, no, but they so will send up some others. Yeah. Daisies are good to do that mm-hmm. if you deadhead daisies yeah. or the and, shastas. Uh, bleeding heart can do that or cone flower. Mm-hmm. Uh, delphinium, if you're lucky enough to have delphinium right. growing. Uh, flocks, I've already done that. Well, the deer have done that to my flocks. They've yes. t- cut the bloom off. They've already off. cut the bloom off. Yeah, yeah. and then they, they do reflower later. Uh, sage and salvia and yarrow, you can all, you know, like deadhead those. And, and they come they back. They come back. Come back. Yeah. Not a full bloom. No. You know, mm-hmm. Never expect a full bloom, but no. some of them. It's you know, just like, you'll get some. you know, the uh, azaleas, they talk about the, you know, re-blooming. re-blooming. Well, they re-bloom, but just a little bit. So yeah. it's not like the spring flush. So. And when the daylilies <laughs> uh, get through uh, mm-hmm. blooming, you can, they just live one day. Mm-hmm. So then what do you recommend to do well, that? Well, I had the, when we had the daylily club, we had um, several members that were experts in daylilies. And one of them, they would, she would go in the garden in the evening and she would just take all the spent blooms off. And those blooms, you can just take the, the, the bloom off on a daylily um, because there'll probably be other buds there coming out. Mm-hmm. So she would just kind of dead her, head hers at night, and then in the morning, you know, they're pretty. She would have pretty. new blooms again. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. And, but a lot of the petunias, like the petunias, today they might look fine, and tonight they may look fine, but tomorrow morning they may look dead. So it depends on the plant, you know, when, what you, when it, it if, actually... Well, they only bloom for one day. A yeah, daylily yeah. blooms for one day. Yeah, so it just depends on the plant, yeah. you know. And with all my native plants, I don't even have to worry. Oh. Their plants have just disappeared, most of them. Now that, in the summer. Uh, yeah, now the black-eyed Susans are blooming and mm-hmm. the chloriopsis and that. And then I cut them clear down. So um, you don't, like, trim I, them to no, maybe I don't, rebloom? No, I don't. Okay. Because they're so tall this year oh. and they're Because of all the rain? Other. Yeah, they're, with all this rain, they're yeah. extra tall. And so I just want to get rid of that and let the other perennials that's coming up not be okay. so shattered. And that doesn't damage them to cut them no, back. No, it does not. Because then all the all the effort yes. goes into the roots. Right. right. And if I want some, they spread, you know, with mm-hmm. their seed, and I leave maybe one or two to be sure that I have 
Okay. Seeds. So they do reseed. They reseed, yeah. yeah. Okay. And some of them come up from the same plant. And true, you know, like if your petunias, if you have a bed of them or something, uh, I had them in St. Louis where they would reseed mm -hmm. in this one bed, and I didn't pay much attention to them. They were just like in a corner, and I just let them do their things. And they did some reseed. impatience, the old impatience, will reseed I themselves know. too. And we have one gardener in our, master, in our garden club. She had so many impatience reseeding. They were like weeds to her. Mm -hmm. They they just reseeded through her whole garden. They were beautiful. I cannot get my impatience to reseed. I think I've had one or two that have reseeded. Yeah. But. And the petunia, it's generally not your hybridized petunias. No. It's generally your pinks or your mm -hmm. the different color of, of pink. The old, the old, old, old petunias. petunias. They come yeah. back. Yeah. But in, in um, I was just always amazed that... Uh, Lorene Terry had um, impatience growing everywhere in the sidewalks and in the cracks, and you know she just had impatience right. receding everywhere, and they, I loved them. So, um, but you know, if you had, do have some of your blooms that kind of dry up, and um, they just look better when you take them off, like your canna blooms. Right. You know, and your... Um, because the canna still has a nice green form oh, yeah. to it, a nice shape. It's a it's a good leafy, uh, kind of looks well, uh, tropical. Right. I always think a canna looks tropical, yeah, like a palm. And a lot of people just grow them for the, for the greenery. Right. You know, not right. for the flowers, especially. And some of them are um, multicolored mm -hmm. leaves, too. They aren't mm -hmm. just green. Mm -hmm. you know? Yeah, they have beautiful striped leaves. And with all my hostas... Um, soon as they get through blooming, they will start doing seed mm -hmm. and definitely cut off those tall spikes right. and not let them go to seed because that takes away from your plant then. Right. And if you did try to grow hostas from seed, how long would it take? To a have long it? time. <laughs> <laughs> a long time. Sometimes I see that I've let some of them go to seed or and I'll have a little plant coming up mm -hmm. and I've watched it and it's a little plant for a long, long time so. it's best if you want a hosta <laughs> just go buy one go buy one or that's separate, already separate yeah or hostas, separate yeah yeah okay. and the coral bells you know they have that little spiky blue right on them it just looks so kind of ugly <laughs> but when they dry up they just look kind of kind of bad same with the day lilies when they get through blooming that yeah. tall stem then you have to cut that back yeah, down and to the base. Yeah, yeah. And that's a good. That's pretty ugly. If you leave them on there. long enough, they kind of turn brown. And then and you can you just can pull just them up. Pull them out. Yeah. You just pull right out of the. Sometimes the plant. I've been a little lazy, and they're brown, and I could just go pull <laughs> yeah. them out. It depends yeah. how busy we get. <laughs> yes. So. And we do get busy. Yes. You know, in the garden. Yes. So, um, but it's just. Uh, uh -oh. Like I said, July is just the time you want to. If it's cool in the morning, go around and just check your your plants and, and pick a bouquet head. and take it in the house. Yeah. So the zinnias or whatever you have right. that the flowers, the cone flowers yeah. are pretty. Now I picked a bouquet of cone flowers yesterday. Oh. They look real pretty. Yeah. And then so you don't have to deadhead them. No, I don't have to deadhead them. Terrible. And the birds. Some of the things we want to leave uh, the the uh, canaries like uh, or the wild the finches. The finches. They like. Um, they really like, like those seed, seed pods. pods, yeah. And so generally I leave uh, my cone flowers on for a little longer than uh, mm -hmm. some of my others because of the birds right. eating the seeds. And when your grasses are going to seed, mm -hmm. um, don't cut those off. That's what looks pretty in yeah. the winter, and the birds will eat those yeah. seeds too. Yeah. So you just have to kind of check and see if there are some grasses um, and some flowers that the birds will eat. Right. Now on my um, Oregon grape, the little um, yes. grape seeds that Mine's they put Mine's all gone out, already. I still have some. Do you? And it's really late in the year for them. Uh, I usually have the, the, um, the birds come and get right. one at a time and take them up to the tree and eat it and then come back down. There's just fun to watch. Right. But I still have some left and I'm not sure, you know, usually by this time they're gone. Things are mm -hmm. doing Things are just different this year. Well, seasons. with all the rain, but the dogwoods and the cold weather, the dogwoods and the red buds were beautiful oh, this spring. This was mm -hmm. one of the most beautiful years I've seen in 25 years. Yes, it's for very the dog beautiful. Dogwoods and the red buds. I had dogwoods beautiful. blooming that I didn't even know I had dogwoods out oh, in the timber. Yeah. So that was fun too. Because the ones even out in the woods, you know, they, they were, were just beautiful. gorgeous, mm -hmm. full of blooms and really white. And, uh, but you just never know from year to year exactly when things are going to bloom and, no. and how they're going to bloom. It all depends on Mother Nature. That's so. Mother Nature doing okay. that. <laughs> and um, the other thing is in the summer, 
You may have some shrubs that have just little growth that sticks up. Um, you don't want to do any heavy trimming this time of year. But if you just have um, a few plants that are just kind of, I call them a bad hair day. Yes. You know. I even noticed the oak trees have little sprouts way down low oh, coming yeah. out of them. And you trim those off too. So. But if you just take those suckers off, they're called mm -hmm. suckers at the bottom of the trees, it's better for the trees to take right, those off. Right. So those you want to trim off. And some any, trees definitely sucker. Yeah, mm -hmm. Any limbs that, you know, that they're coming out and they're going to be a limb, you want to take those take off. Them off. Yeah. I noticed um, on the oak tree there was a lot of them the other day, just little tiny limbs down, mm -hmm. down, down farther. Low. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then I just, yeah. they come take off very off. easy. But um, I have a, uh, an abelia that blooms in the fall, mm -hmm. and then it has these little new growths new growths out there. And if I take them off, it's not going to take away from the plant. The plant's still going to bloom, mm -hmm. but it's just those wild ones aren't going to bloom. Yeah. Yeah. And then if you see any dead branches, I have a few of the dead branches in the uh, yeah. and, and as I, um, my um, hydrangela, the, mm -hmm. um, it, it that grows on old growth, the blooms are through blooming mm -hmm. now, and there's a dead stick with yeah. just a few leaves on it. And I cut that out yeah. just so the bush looks, looks better. better. Yeah. yeah. Those you can take out. Now the, um, and that's a lace leaf that. Yeah. Uh, well, even your mop, you know, your big ones. Yeah, I bloom. don't. Mine will still look good yeah, on that. Yeah. And the oak leaf hydrangeas still look good. Oh, yes. They're Changing color green. now. Yeah. It's going yeah. from white to the purpley mm -hmm. pink. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Very pretty. So, but it's, it's a pretty time of year. And, um, but like I said, if you just um, need to reshape something or, you know, just don't do a lot of heavy, heavy trimming in the And remember, the too, that now the caterpillars, I've been seeing a lot of butterflies. Oh. And on my fiddle, I had some black swallowtail caterpillars. Oh, I haven't checked mine. And, yeah, and so remember, they're not worms. They are caterpillars, yes. and you watch your caterpillars. Yes. Um, and I just planted more milkweed, <laughs> so I should have some more milkweed. You should have, yeah. The um, monarchs, a little early for monarchs, unless yeah. one just kind of was... Stayed in Missouri or something and coming through, you know. Yeah. <laughs> but the I did notice that we do have, and on my um, uh, Dutchman's pipe, I had that. And uh, uh, so I've had some caterpillars. Mm -hmm. And just remember that some of those caterpillars are very beautiful butterflies. Yeah, don't kill so the don't, caterpillars. Don't get rid of them. Yeah. And they won't kill. They will not kill your plant. No, they just are eating and turning into going to be a chrysalis. Chrysalis and, and, and a, be a butterfly. butterfly yeah. But with all the rain we've had in June, you might have to prepare for watering in July. That's one of the things you'll have to do in July. Mm -hmm. And you want to do, a, um, to conserve your water, do a drip system if you can. Deep watering. And deep water. You than don't want just to just putting sprinkle a, a little top. water yeah. on top. That just Well, that, the deep watering <laughs> makes for a good root oh, system. Yeah. And the shallow watering just brings your roots up. Yeah. So you don't want to do that. So, um, and then and when you fertilize your, your annuals and your perennials, don't forget to water them first. Don't just pour fertilizer on the, the, um, um, you know, on the dry plant. Mm -hmm. It could burn the roots. So be sure you water and then pinch. And then, um, and then perennials, mums, we gotta cut, we got to pinch those back till about July 15th. Yeah, so they will not get too tall and fall yeah, over. Yeah. yeah, and then that's just kind just of shape a, them up and pinch the blooms yeah, off. Yeah, and make, make them bushy instead of tall and mm -hmm. leggy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then lawns, um, they need at least one inch of water a week, and you don't want to fertilize in July or August, so don't fertilize your lawns. Just raise your, your cutting a little bit to maybe three inches or so, so that they have some shade in the, on the roots. So. And then roses, watch for your aphids and fungus. And I haven't seen any Japanese beetles yet this year. No, haven't either. And um, last year I didn't see very yeah. many. With all the rain and um, things, uh, some mildew problems. Yeah I've, yeah, I've seen a lot uh, of that. They'll still bloom. A flock sometimes gets that mildew mm -hmm. uh, problem. Right. But maybe it's not getting enough air around it. The old flocks, so, the garden flocks yeah, will do Mine that. are all full of that because yeah. of the, all the rain. You can't go out and wipe your flocks off <laughs> after no, rain. No. I have so, too many. Um, trees and shrubs, just be sure that trees and shrubs, you check for um, scale or bagworms or webworms. Um, and if you have bagworms, it's those little brown things that hang down on the stem. Just take those, put them in a bucket, and, and burn them. That's about all you can do with, them, with, them. with those. And just, be, just check their water. 
um, vegetables uh, should be them. coming yeah. should be coming into. Uh, um, well, there, there's a lot of spring vegetables at the farmer markets. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and if you have them in your garden, just enjoy. Yes. Um, and it's a little too early to be planting your fall crop, but too early. Just enjoy your tomatoes and whatever you planted. So, and if you have any questions about gardening in July, um, you can go to our, our website, BellaVistaGardenClub.com. And um, also the Master Gardeners website has a lot of good information, and that's BentonCountyGardening.org. And um, for more information on the Garden Club, you can just go to BellaVistaGardenClub.com. We have a lot of information. Um, and our next meeting is going to be a little different. Uh, we, we take the summer off with our meetings, and instead of meeting in September, this year we're going to meet in August for the first time for the year. And that's going to be August 28th at the Bella Vista Community Church. And we're having a new time this year also. So we'll be meeting at 9.30 for social time, and they'll have some drinks and pastries. And um, then the meeting will start at 10. So we're starting earlier, and there won't be a lunch, but there'll be some pastries and coffee and whatever. And uh, guests are always welcome to our to our. Yes, you know, we we love to have guests. And then we like them to be new members. Uh, yes, yes, and we we are probably one of well, I don't know if we're the largest garden club in Arkansas, but if we're not, we're the second largest. Yes, yeah, so we're, we're very large, very, and very large, active, and very active. We do a lot of projects, and uh, um, it's just a great organization. It and is. there's been some wonderful friendships that have developed over the years yes. uh, with the garden club members. So great organization. So um, the main thing to do in July is keep cool and enjoy the, the longer days. The longer days. Yeah, they have longer days. And um, just Work enjoy in the morning or Work the at, evening. Yes. And be sure you water in the daytime. If you do water, you want to water in the morning. Yeah. It's better time to water than in the evening. Yeah, then because then the water sits, sits on the there plants, and yeah. that's that's Just, where you get yeah, that's where you Mildew. get a little bit of fungus growing yeah. and things. So. Yeah. So thank you, Lou, for joining me today. I enjoyed uh, it. I always love to have you and yeah. share your knowledge. <laughs> yeah. And yes. uh, make our gardens look wonderful. Well, I, yeah. My garden needs a little TLC. Care now. <laughs> a little TLC. Yes, it does. The yeah. weeds are growing higher than the oh, flowers. Oh, the weeds yeah. this year have been horrendous <laughs> yeah. because of all the rain. So they do. watch those weeds. Don't let them go to seed. you got to get deadhead those and yes. get those out of there. And so, and then, um, so anyway, I hope you've enjoyed the program. And um, we'll join us again next month. And until then... Don't forget to stop and smell the roses. This has been a presentation of Bella Vista Community Television. You may view this program on Wednesday at 8 p.m. or on Saturday at 8 a.m. Or you may go to the Bella Vista Garden Club website, www.bellavistagardenclub.com or the Benton County Master Gardeners website, www.bentoncountygardening.org. You may also view this on Facebook, the Bella Vista Garden Club or the Benton County Master Gardeners. This has been part of a National Garden Club's Incorporated Award-Winning TV Shows. Thank you for watching.